don't. It's chilling how willing many of us are to give up our freedoms. Bloomberg's now censoring terminals in a hundred countries. It's as if the most sensitive get to set the rules for the rest of us. A cashier at the Senate coffee shop, Bernice Harris, used to call people honey, baby, and sugar. Then a man complained that was sexual harassment. She was allowed to keep her job. But I don't call nobody baby no more. A city attorney in Tennessee ordered this painting removed from a government building after a woman complained. Some companies now ask employees who want to date a coworker to sign love contracts like this. Some forbid dating altogether, which is too bad since one study found married couples were more likely to have met at work than any place else. It's how Bogey and Bacall met. Tom and Nicole, Alec and Kim. I met my wife when we both worked for Good Morning America. But that was before all the new rules. If you put in those kind of rules, then I think there's going to be a lot of people who are going to miss out on possibly the relationship of their lives. In Westwood, California, Todd Pozovac asked Linda Jaffe out a dozen times. I think that I would have had a case for going to somebody and saying, look, this guy's really bugging me. You know, he's around all the time. He's asking me out all the time. Do something about it. Fortunately, she didn't, because after three months of his pursuit, she fell in love, and they got married. High five. High five. High five. Clap. Brandon. High five. Now they have a child. I don't know how he put up with me for those three months, because I don't think I would have stuck it out, but I'm very grateful that he did. Of course, that was then. This was, you know, six years ago. Now things are a lot more hypersensitive. So sensitive, there's now a $10 billion industry devoted to finding harassment and rooting it out. This is a business, not a bar. One company shows workers this musical, which is supposed to sensitize the insensitive. But hold off those compliments and rethink that smile. We want to look at the kinds of things that just bristle you. My Consultants man. like Olivet Jones run sensitivity training seminars for companies worried about being sued. Bottom line, don't say anything you wouldn't want your mother to hear you say. Companies pay Jones some $2,000 a day to educate employees. We assembled this group. Don't talk about body parts. Don't give people sexual attention of any kind, whether you think they want it or not. No body parts, no nice eyes. Just understand that there are some consequences because your nice eyes may be interpreted by somebody else as a totally different thing. So what does this add up to? Are you becoming a bland person? Yes, you are. Not everyone's thrilled about that because it's... Making the workplace a lot, you know, more um, restrictive, cold, unhealthy, less fun. Sometimes it seems as if today in America, instead of people competing to be more self-reliant, People now compete to see who can be most offended. It's not just sexual words that people object to. At Carmel High School in Indiana, teachers were frightened when they discovered a student, Brian Conrad, had created a website under the address Time to Die. Turns out Time to Die is just internet jargon for keeping someone out of an AOL chat room, but the teachers didn't know that, and Brian, on his site, had listed the names of some teachers and, as a joke, said, are they Satan-worshipping demons? laugh in their faces, shun them. It was pretty scary because there's devils, there's pentagrams, my name's on it. Anybody could find this and send me a, send me a message. Uh, they knew where I worked. Did, did anyone? No. But she and two other teachers felt so threatened by the website, they sued Brian and his family, demanding thousands of dollars in damages. They even tried to get criminal charges filed against Brian. There's no direct threat. He, he just says, laugh at you. Plus the word shun, and I know that I've got some students in my class that could really misconstrue what that means. And to some wacko kid, what's the connotation of shun? If I'm not mistaken, Amish societies, mm -hmm. if someone is shunned, they are considered dead. They no longer exist. But so that's if, if someone really is to contorting it to make it a direct threat. Why? That, that, is a, that is not a normal vocabulary word that's going to be used. But ignoring people is okay. It's a form of free speech. It's not physical you can threat. You ignore a statement and you can ignore for a short period of time, but to shun is permanent. Some teachers named on the site, like Janice Groh, thought it was obvious that the site was a kid's joke. Misspellings and all. I know I'm not a Satan worshiper and none of these people are Satan worshippers. And um, I thought it was silly. And Brian was apologetic. He came forward, he had tears in his eyes, 
I guess that was a relief to find he'd admitted to it. Uh, no. Confession and later apology isn't enough for this group. They want punishment. His mom, Lori Hansen, can't believe what's happened. He voluntarily turned himself in. Are they going to take this? It was a kid's prank. No, this is not the way teenagers express themselves. None of you was harmed. But we were harmed emotionally. Here's the lesson plan. If you do this, these are your consequences. What parents? are the consequences? Mm -hmm. Consequences? For parents, it's money. And criminal charges for the boy? Mm -hmm. He was intimidating. And that is a criminal charge. Mm -hmm. So what's the effect on Brian? He feels like his life is over. That's what he keeps telling me. Come on, ladies, toughen up. You're supposed to stand for free speech, the open debate. Free speech means freedom to state an opinion. Mm -hmm. It does not mean freedom to slander and freedom to threat. And no matter who thinks it is or isn't a threat, I do. There's that frightening threat to free speech. The offended get to decide which speech is okay. It's even written into sexual harassment law. Um, what is appropriate and what is inappropriate really exist only through the eyes of the person who's experiencing it. The person who hears it gets to determine if it's offensive. Absolutely. But what if my intent is good? Doesn't matter, John. If I shoot you dead, do you care that I meant, didn't mean to? But we're not talking bullets here. We're talking words. No, we, they have the same power. That's a dangerous concept. Yes, words can hurt, but if words are bullets, and it's okay to answer words with bullets. I think words are words and bullets are bullets, and it's important to our freedom that we keep them apart. This speaker is outnumbered, shouted down on campus after campus. Stossel gets drowned out, too. We can hear you with these people, right? Come on, everybody, louder! What's happening to free speech at college? When You Can't Say That with John Stossel returns after this from our ABC stations. Tonight at 10, look at this, robbery in progress. Now local police are hunting for armed thieves. Our crime team will have the story. Plus, cheaper gas and someone in uniform to give your car the royal treatment. It's right here in the Metro. And ever have this problem? The vehicle was totally out of fuel. It wouldn't start at all. See if this quick fill-up can rescue you on the road. Then Alex Trebek's final answer about being on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire when you watch Eyewitness News 5 tonight at 10. gotten into everyone. Ah, that's what. The 2000 Mercury Mountaineer. It's rugged. It's luxurious. And now it comes with $500 worth of gas from Total. Plus $1,000 cash back. So stop by your Mercury dealer today and fill up with happiness. We are doctors and specialists for over 80 years. We are a network of physicians offering a full range of services. We are people and technology. We are access to renowned hospitals, including St. Anthony Hospital. We are women and men committed to provide superior health care for you and your family. We are Oklahoma City Clinic. Oklahoma's doctors since 1919. Your doctors for life. Need a job? Need a better job? Call the Feist Five and Touch job line at 475-5000 extension J-O-B-S. Or log on to KOCOTV.com. Choose from a variety of jobs and put your resume online. The Feist Five and Touch job line could be your answer. I'll let you know if rain chances are diminishing coming up at 10. You can't say that. What's happening to free speech continues. Here again, John Stossel. You'd think if any place would stand for free speech, it would be universities. Think the unthinkable, it says in one school's free expression handbook. Unfettered freedom is necessary to discover knowledge. Universities used to stand for that. Today, something else is going on. Ward Connerly thinks racial preferences are wrong and goes to universities to argue that. Our government should treat everybody the same equal protection under the law. Now, as you can hear, this is not a universally popular idea. Treating everyone equally means an end to some affirmative action programs that help minority students get admitted to school. I know it's your school, but you have a right to be civil. I 
I'm here because I was invited to be here, and I thought that most of you would be willing to listen and to engage in civil discussion. But you cannot engage in civil discussion. Let me... Here at the University of Texas, these students say Connerly's ideas are so objectionable, he should not be allowed to be heard. They're going to try and spin this out and say that somehow his free, his free speech, his First Amendment rights were violated. Our First Amendment rights as students were violated when he hit, the, when he hit this campus. You don't support First Amendment rights. That's what the First Amendment is about. Students like this one who think Connerly should be heard also get shouted down. It bothers you that a black man would be against your point of view. If that isn't, if that isn't saying... The same thing happened here at the University of Michigan. It happens regularly to Connor. Sometimes I'm prevented from actually speaking because it's not just a matter of heckling. They will try to block the door from allowing me to get in. The game plan is to make sure that this guy does not get his message across. You're threatening them. That does not give them a license to go out and deny me the right to come on campus and to argue my point of view. At Columbia University, a Connerly supporter was shouted down. We win, celebrated the protesters, students like these. I felt like it was a victory. The conference was completely disrupted. And that was exactly what we were hoping to do. You can go back home to the sewer that you were came from and, you know, spout your ideas there, and that's fine. You may not speak here. Sure. Some people might have wanted to hear him. Who gave you that power to decide for everybody? I'm taking the power, actually, by, by going out and, and protesting, saying, racist, get off my campus. Whoever yells the loudest wins? Isn't that like third grade behavior? It's not third grade. I mean, if they get chased out of the city, they get chased out of the city. Their, their ideas aren't welcome. Colleges have been where open debate was supposed to flourish. Colleges are the worst places in the world, often, to have a civil discussion about any issue. Get off this Great. campus. We don't want you here. I'm just trying to educate awareness. myself and other people with well, me. Okay. I got a taste of it at Brown University, when a few years ago, covering a rally against sexual violence, I did a politically incorrect thing. What's allowed? What's to spark debate, I questioned the activist's broad definition of sexual misconduct. There's appropriate behavior. We, we can't hear you with these people trying to drown something. When some did want to speak, the demonstrators righteously shouted them down. So, can I ask you why you're screaming that? Rape is not TV height! Rape is not TV height! Rape is not TV height! Come on, everybody, louder! At this school, something you'll learn is that there is one opinion, and the other opinion turns out to be wrong. Where do students learn that censorship's the answer? Well, today, their schools often teach that by example. Many schools' official policy is to ban words that the sensitive would consider offensive. Old Dominion University bans offensive sexual jokes. Virginia Commonwealth bans humor and jokes about sex that denigrate women or men in general. Alan Charles Coors, co-author of The Shadow University, read a samples of things prohibited at universities. At the University of Maryland... Distribution of written or graphic materials that are derogatory. There would go most of the great writers um, in the history of world literature. And it bans as harassment sexual looks such as leering and ogling, licking lips or teeth, I hope you don't have dry lips at the University of Maryland, or take your attorney with you to the cafeteria holding or eating food provocatively. What our universities are teaching students is that freedom should die in their hearts. 